Hey everybody, welcome to my uh, Running Moms interview series here, my exclusive interview series for UVIP Running Moms in Training. Uh, today we have Leanne here, Leanne Sedentop. Did I say that right? You did, yay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Leanne is awesome. She's been around in, a, my, in these running groups for a long time actually, so she knows exactly what's going on out there with you guys. She's, she's there, she's watching, she's moving with us. Mm -hmm. um, and I've asked her to come today to talk a little bit about uh, fatigue and adrenal fatigue specifically because I know that this is an issue. We are busy, we are pushing, we are running, which is a hard activity on our bodies. It's high impact. Um, we have runners have this unique mindset of go, go, go and push, push, push. And then we have kids and it, it really changes and we need to tune into our bodies. So Leanne's here to help us today tune into her bodies and listen to what it's saying. So Leanne, if you don't know her, is registered holistic nutritionist and women's health coach that specializes in supporting women to be strong and vibrant mothers without losing themselves in the process. She focuses on the idea that making ourselves a priority is actually good for the whole family. Through whole food, movement, and a healthy dose of self-care, she supports women to reconnect to themselves and fully show up in their lives. Thanks, Leanne, for being here. This is awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Okay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, for um, sure. So you know, you've seen runners, you've seen my groups, and, and, you, and you know that working with moms, that low motivation, low energy, these complaints of I can't lose weight or I can't push through my plateaus um, are real and people aren't sleeping properly. Um, why? And I know in your practice you deal a lot with the adrenal fatigue. Why? What's your story? Like, what's your background with adrenal fatigue? Yeah. So it's funny. When I started this business, I was more focused on prenatal and um, I was even a doula. I have training as a doula. I was practicing as a doula. And um, I think it was actually practicing as a doula that really kind of sent me personally over the edge into like adrenal burnout. Um, I was likely hovering there for a while. Um, after my second was born, she's four now, but um, I had some pretty significant postpartum depression, which is certainly tied to hormonal imbalances and things like that. And even after that particular fog lifted, I kind of stepped out of that and into a whole other different fog. And I felt better, but I could just tell that something still wasn't right. And I just, you know, I'd go to my doctor's office and I would cry <laughs> and I would get dismissed, you know, and I would just be, I felt like I was begging for help, but I just wasn't being heard. Um, things like, you know, PMS where I'd never really had that before. Um, I just couldn't lose weight like this, this after my second baby, the weight didn't come off as it did with the first, um, just zero patience, like more than, more than just being an impatient person. It was almost like an out of body experience where the tiniest little thing would just set me off the deep end. Um, loud noises, like I could just kind of tell that my nervous system was just frayed because just the tiniest little thing would just irk me. And like, you know, we have kids, they're loud. And um, to a degree, we're supposed to be able to tolerate that. And I just couldn't tolerate um, those sorts of things. I was having irregular um, menstrual cycles, just lack of focus. Like it would literally take me an hour to, I would sit at my computer and I just couldn't, I almost couldn't focus my eyes. Um, waking up in the morning and just literally dragging myself out of bed and feeling almost like it was un I was unable to open my eyelids for a set period of time. I just lay there like I'm awake, but I can't open my eyes. Um, it kind of goes on and on and on. But anyway, I found, um, I finally found a naturopath who would listen to me. I just, I was too in it for myself. I could, I was starting to kind of recognize maybe what was going on, but we often need to work with somebody else who can see the bigger picture and can kind of lift us out of the fog and kind of see. So we did a whole bunch of testing. Finally, my doctor wasn't willing to go there with me. Um, and we found out that my progesterone was like, in like gutter mode it's supposed to be around 50 and i think i was a two um, and we did a whole bunch of other testing my cortisol was also high which she kind of mentioned offhandedly was like oh yeah you know the cortisol should also be addressed but we didn't really look at that too deeply um, so the progesterone helped and i thought that i had found my answer and i was like oh that was it and i like wept because i had it in black and white and i was like yay i'm not crazy there's actually something else going on with me um, and so I did over time start to feel better and it, and it helped, but then it's still, there's still was something missing. I was like, what, what really? Like, okay, maybe it is just me at this point. Right. Um, but then the cortisol thing came back to me and I started to have to do some more research for myself. Um, and I found out a lot more about adrenal fatigue and which is very tied to 
cortisol imbalance. We talk about blood sugar imbalance and stress hormones and stuff a lot, both you and I do. And um, I was like, oh. And so what my naturopath had mentioned to me came back to me and she had told me, but we didn't really focus on it. And I kind of don't understand why looking back, but what happens is um, our body makes cortisol no matter what. That is like a survival hormone. So what was happening was because I was so kind of stressed out and burned out, my body was stealing progenolone, which is the precursor for progesterone, and turning it into just more cortisol. So by supplementing with more progesterone, which was what I was doing to address that, I was just kind of feeding the fire and not addressing the root cause, which was adrenal fatigue and cortisol imbalance, which... Mm-hmm. and the other sorts of stuff kind of started to take, um, take over. So that was kind of a long winded answer, but what, why I keep coming back to adrenal fatigue and cortisol imbalance is that that's often at the root of so many other hormonal imbalances that women are dealing with. Um, it can usually be the, the starting point for kind of, you know, this cascade effect of, of other hormonal issues that are happening. And so no matter what we've got going on, if we're not also working on the adrenals, then we're just really not addressing the whole picture. So that's why this just keeps coming up personally. It's been my focus. Um, and professionally, I just see it so much. Like on, on one level or another, there's, there's some of that going on that needs to also be addressed. So Yeah, and I feel that yeah. so acutely because <laughs> I was there. I remember trying to fill out a passport application when my yeah. second one was like six months old. And I, I was at my mom's and I just broke down crying. I filled out like five or I couldn't fill out paperwork. And I felt crazy. And I know that yeah. a lot of that was, was adrenal fatigue and, and working through that. So um, what are the big, you told us what your signs and symptoms were, but for, for everyone listening, what should they be looking for in themselves? What are the signs and symptoms that adrenal fatigue can be holding them back? Yeah. So if you Google symptoms for adrenal fatigue, you could get up, up to like a hundred different ones. It, it, can, it can show up in a bunch of different ways, but some of the most common ones are um, blood sugar issues um, insulin resistance. So if women have PCOS or they're pre-diabetic or even diabetic, you also need to be looking at the adrenals. Um, as we've both said, like the brain fog and just kind of concentration issues, um, which for me was huge. And once that kind of lifted, I didn't realize what a fog I had been walking around in when all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, like the world just feels much clearer now. <laughs> um, difficulty falling asleep or just restless sleep. Um, just feeling exhausted all the time, but also like jittery. They call it like tired, but wired. That's a really common one for women. Um, digestive symptoms, which is pretty vague, but constipation in particular is is a big one or just that irritable, irritable bowel where you're kind of fluctuating between, you know, constipation and not, um, fatigue or even, you know, as far as chronic fatigue syndrome, there's always going to be an adrenal component there as well. Um, just feeling stuck, like in, on, like it, I used to, some people call it like the hamster wheel. I used to refer to it as feeling like I was on a roller coaster and I just couldn't get off. Um, just like overwhelmed and kind of on overdrive all the time. Um, food cravings, which I know you and I speak about a lot, um, especially for sugar and carbs, sometimes fatty foods. Um, salt also is, um, so just cravings in general, I guess, really kind of depends especially that afternoon, like 3 p.m. sort of crash where you just need sugar or you want a giant coffee or both. Um, Frequent colds and infections. So signs of like lowered immunity for sure can come up. Um, Blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, other hormonal imbalances, as I was saying, because the adrenals actually decide how and when other hormones in our body are used. So again, if there's other hormonal things going on, the adrenals really do need to be looked at. And if they're, and if it's, just adrenals that's going on. If we don't address them, ultimately there will be other cascades um, of issues that come up. One thing for your runners to make note of for sure is inflammation and joint pain. So we think, oh, I'm a runner or, you know, I'm really active. I'm getting older. My knees are supposed to hurt. They might if you're not, you know, if, if you're not following Carrie's instructions and like have proper form and those sorts of things. But often it's what we're eating. It's, you know, what's going on in our body vitamin and mineral deficiencies that are going to be causing some of that pain. 
Um, irritability, like I was speaking about, was huge for me. Um, anxiety and depression as well um, can come up. And then waking up, even if you've gone to bed, you've, you know, you've been in bed for a good amount of time, you're still just waking up tired and like dragging your butt out of bed. Um, that's a big sign. And weight gain as well, either gaining weight or just the inability to lose weight. Um, which I know comes up a lot in our mom's groups as well is like, you know, I'm eating clean, which I really don't love that word. Um, but you know, you're eating well, nutrient dense, whole foods, and you're, you know, you're working out, but why, where, why is this weight not coming off of me? Um, likely there's, you know, some stuff that we would need to look at hormonally as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's only like a quarter of the different. <laughs> yeah. So much. Um, and so up a lot. And so is it linked to, it's linked to stress. Because mm -hmm. what I see in a lot of people is, you know, in women, especially moms, new moms, just getting back to work moms, like we are stressed in a way we've never, women have never been stressed before. Is this, um, is this common? Is, is the, um, what am I trying to ask? Uh, how much, what's the percentage of people that have this? And is it going up? Like, is the percentage of people improving? Do you know? Increasing? Good question. So I don't really people. know. I don't really have like actual numbers there, but anecdotally and just from my own experience, yeah. like I, I really, I'm as a nutritionist, I can't diagnose anybody with things, but I would like, I can see signs and symptoms and pretty much anybody I encounter. I do too. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, it's, it's hard. Um, I think, you know, there's, there's external pressures and there's internal pressures and it's, mm -hmm. you know, finding the balance and, and, you know, controlling what we can and really working to let some of the other stuff go um, and not trying to control so much. Mm -hmm. Which leads <laughs> yeah. to my next question is yeah. um, what, what can we do about it? Like what are some strategies that, that the, that my runners can do? Because when you are a runner, you're going to run. And my goal is to support women to get up and running and to keep them running. So knowing that people aren't going to stop exercising, like how can they help themselves in this? Um, if yeah. they have. For sure. Well, for we can start with exercise for sure and um absolutely movement is key so it's absolutely not about just laying on the couch um but being smart with your movement and so if you're feeling like if, if you were checking off like yes that's me to all like a lot of those symptoms then you know long distance like super long hot heart like really exertive long-term exercises may not be in your best interest in the short term but like the HIIT exercises that you're talking about and putting out there a lot are perfect um, because you get really good results. They're not super long, so they're not overtaxing your body. Um, some, yeah, like, so it's just training smart and listening to your body, which I know you, you're so good at, at promoting that. Um, noticing, you know, after, like an hour after your workout, do you feel energized or do you feel like you're crashing and you need a nap? Because if, if you're crashing, Maybe you didn't eat enough or you didn't hydrate enough. And those are some things to look at as well. Um, or you were up five times with your baby and maybe today should have been a rest day, right? And that's, again, listening to your body. Um, but all of those things being equal um, and you're still feeling like you need to crash and burn after your workout, then that's a sign it was too hard on your body. And so you just need to scale it back a bit. It's not about stopping, um, but it's about being smart. And probably they, they could speak to you. Um, you know, you'd be able to... Um, support them a little bit better with that, like re rejigging their, their schedule and those sorts of things to make sure that it's not too much mm -hmm. um, and that it's more supportive instead of like, there's a time to push and then there's a time to step back. And um, we just, we need to like, women are meant to be receiving and like, you know, the feminine energy we're we're not good at actually expressing that we live in such a masculine world and it's such a push 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 sort of thing mm -hmm. and a, um not necessarily gender but like just that energy right um and so really trying to alongside the the workouts and the, the movement like finding time ways to de-stress and to relax and receive um whether that's you know essential oils or naps or baths and i know like probably some women right now when they're watching this are going to be rolling their eyes like yeah right <laughs> You don't know my life, um, but I do. I've got two kids too, and I'm running a business, and I, you know, I've got a husband and friends and a whole bunch of stuff, and I've, I just have to say no to a lot of it because if I don't, then I literally lay in bed for 30 minutes and I can't open my eyes. Like that's just I've decided that that's unacceptable for me now, and 
So I've had to scale back and I've had to say no and just get real with what I'm able to do for now. Mm -hmm. And then, and it keeps improving. Um, as far as there's also obviously a lot of nutritional stuff. So that's like, I'm going to stop you just for a second. Oh, yeah. I want to just go back before you get into yeah. nutrition and I just to the, the part of goal setting, um, and scaling back your runs. I tell my runners over and over again, it's not about the amount of miles. Runners think that more miles are better miles. And I really, really need to stress, and this is the perfect time to do that, that more miles is not better miles. More half marathons, more marathons right after your baby, or maybe in the first four years isn't, might not be appropriate for you if your body is not responding. And for me personally, I knew that I couldn't, because if I set myself up to run that half marathon, I didn't have time. I looked at those runs as work and as stress and it stressed me out because my family was upset and my husband was upset and I just couldn't put the work in I needed. Mm -hmm. So I scaled it back to 5Ks and I ran them with quality and I was excited about them. I could fit them into my day and I trained really smart and in tune with my body and that is what I try and talk to all of you guys about is really meeting yourself where you're at and setting yeah. the goals that are going to make you excited that you can succeed at. And I think that that's going to help you with those cortisol and that stress and running shouldn't be stressful. Exercise shouldn't be stressful. I know you and me always love that, that poster where um, it says exercise isn't about punishing your body. It's about yeah. celebrating what it can do. I think that's sure. never more important than at this point in life when you have these little kids or when you're struggling with your weight loss plateaus or your fitness plateaus, like this is probably one of the core reasons why. And we need to just, just go back and have a look at the bigger picture again, because um, I think that running a strong 5k training 20 or 30 minutes a day, five days a week can be very, very rewarding and really, really helpful for you pushing forward. Absolutely. And, yeah. and it, it, yeah, it's not always about harder, faster, stronger. Like you, no. sometimes you can get stronger by just being by more quality, right. Mm -hmm. Instead of quantity. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you'll actually may get the results you want from scaling back. Yeah. Like I have one client, um, it's the exact, like she was kill, literally killing herself at the gym and I had her scale it back and we've done some nutritional stuff too. And the weight, there's like her body just said, thank you. Yeah. Like she's lost 10 pounds in two weeks. Yeah. That's fast. Like that's actually much faster weight loss than we would look for normally. But that was the missing kind of link. That's not to say that's going to happen for everybody, but um, but yeah, she but if you're less, pushing against a hard, yeah, and if you're pushing against something and you're like at a wall, you. I always love the the saying that the definition of insanity is like doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different yeah. result. So I know this very acutely because this is what happened to me, right? Hit yeah. rock bottom, exhausted, lethargic, foggy, short. My relationships were all suffering thought I was crazy, mm -hmm. started, so we'll talk about nutrition next, but started eating better, started working out shorter, changed my goals from half marathon and marathon with those short in those early years to just getting out and running 5k and feeling good. And like my body just clicked, it clicked mm -hmm. back to what it used to be. And then it, it got stronger than I've ever been. So, and I know it was linked to this and I didn't know this before. I just worked through it because of of my my natural abilities and skills in my medical yeah. training but so talking about nutrition next to help with this yeah so nutritional sure. strategies for sure and i just want to say that like it's not i don't i don't want to feel like women are being blamed or like the women listening to this we're not blaming you like this is society mm -hmm. that set us up to believe that it we need to punish ourselves and it's supposed to hurt and that we're supposed to feel deprived and you know we're supposed to make ourselves smaller and like fit into these very narrow boxes of what being a woman is supposed to be. Um, so I'd like to call bullshit on all of that. <laughs> Me too. Just be happy. We all just want to be happy. For sure. Cause yeah. it's, it's literally killing us. Like it's it just not serving us. So it's time to let that go. Mm -hmm. um, nutritionally, there's two kind of facets to um, supporting ourselves nutritionally. So it's cutting out the crap, you know, putting it bluntly um, and then it's adding in all the good nutrient dense, real whole foods, really. Like it really is kind of that simple. That's not to suggest it's easy because again, society is set up to make all of the crap really accessible. Right. And because we're craving things and we're depleted, it's even harder, you know? Hello. So it's, it's a hello. Hi, can you hear me? Anyway, I can hear you, you lost me. I'm sorry. Take that out. Oh dear. 
Um, so the things that we're going to avoid, there, there's not any big surprises here. Um, sugar, you know, artificial sweeteners, processed foods, um, hydrogenated oils, unhealthy fats, those sorts of things. Um, this one I may, might make me unpopular, but caffeine um, doesn't mean you have to give it up forever or completely. But if, if you said yes to a lot of those signs and symptoms that I was talking about, taking a break from caffeine, which directly impacts our nervous system, um, can be a really big step, or at least cutting back. Um, and then adding in um, good quality, healthy, um, whole foods. Um, some key ones to include some of the top superfoods for adrenals would be uh, coconut, both, you know, coconut milk, coconut oil, which is like super popular and trendy lately, um, olives and olive oil, avocado. So those are all your like really healthy fats, um, which are so important for brain health for they're the precursors like our hormones are made from from fats so we need good healthy fats to support our hormones um cruciferous vegetables which are just like the amazing anti-cancer properties high in fiber which we need to support digestion if we're going to support our hormones like it's all interconnected I could talk about this for hours. Um, <laughs> cruciferous vegetables in particular are really great because they help us. They have a few compounds that help us metabolize hormones in our bodies efficiently. Um, so, um, so cauliflower, broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts, kale, the really crunchy green with the exception of cauliflower, which is white. Um, fatty fish, really great protein source. Again, high in omega-3s, really good um, uh, healthy fat, chicken, turkey. So if you're, if you're a vegetarian, that's cool. But if you're not, then like good quality um, lean meats um, are great. Nuts and seeds, which would be, you know, walnuts, almonds, pumpkin, chia, flax, um, kelp and seaweed. So sea vegetables are really great. Um, they have a lot of micro minerals, which are really supportive to all of our, all of the glands that are part of our endocrine system. Iodine in particular is very supportive of our thyroid and where there's a thyroid issue, there's often adrenal, they're often very intertwined and thyroid is just like kind of off the charts, like women are being diagnosed with hypothyroid and Hashimoto's, which is the autoimmune version of, of hypothyroid, like wildfire right now. So um, supporting our thyroid is always a good idea. Um, yeah, just low in sugar, nutrient dense real whole foods basically it, yeah it really like it's not sexy it's not some like flashy like product that I can hold up for you and just say you know have two scoops of this a day and you're good to go it does require work it does require planning it might require a big shift depending on where you and your family are at right now with food but um that's that's it right like it's movement it's food and then it's kind of addressing the mindset stuff and like supporting your body to relax and get out of that chronic fight or flight state and then into rest and digest mode, which is, is what I call it. Yeah. So I want to talk a bit about sleep and how important that is. I know um, that we're not sleeping well. I know that we have little kids. I know they're teething. Um, I have two kids. They sleep <laughs> like this with me and I get up to the bathroom and they kick and like sleep is hard. Um, how important is it and what can we do? It's so important. Like sleep really is the third pillar, right? Like there's food and movement and sleep, which is, I think, directly related to stress and stuff. Um, it's when our body does the healing and the, the resting and replenishment that is just so important. Um, and when we're stressed out, um, cortisol and melatonin, which most of us have heard of our, is our sleep hormone, they kind of battle it out. And we want cortisol to be high in the morning, which is what wakes us up, but then it's supposed to ease off into the evening so that melatonin can kick in and help us go to sleep. Um, but for many of us, especially if we've got adrenal fatigue and stuff going on, our cortisol is still high in the afternoon and in the evening. And that's why we're still feeling wired, why you might get that second wind later in the night and why we're often lying awake um, or just having restless sleep and or waking up in the middle of the night because the cortisol is still kind of all over the place. So yeah, sleep is really important. Um, and the movement and the food and all of those sorts of things are supplements as well that we can look at to address really, you know, deep nutrient deficiencies while, while you're working on the food to kind of help, mm -hmm. you know, take you out of the, the gutter. Um, but sleep has to be a priority. It just really does. 
mm-hmm. um, just as much as the food and the movement does, which it's the hardest one because we feel like we're just laying there and we feel like we have all these things to do. Sleep is something to do. Like it's your, your body's literally like it's doing a lot of stuff while you sleep there. And I think that it, it takes work too, to, to sleep well, like it doesn't just happen. And I know no. you mentioned that the cortisol levels and something you taught me was that I, I always feel better when I work out in the morning. I feel like I have the most energy. I can't work out at night. I just don't have it in me. And yeah. that's cool because of the cortisol levels, right? So if you had to, yeah. have, the morning is probably the best routine to get into. For sure, because then you're working with your natural rhythms um, more so because your cortisol is high, is supposed to be highest in the morning mm-hmm. um, because that's what helps you open your eyes. <laughs> when it's imbalanced and you can't open your eyes in the morning, it means it's low and it shouldn't right. be. And that's why we're reaching for the giant coffee and with all the sugar in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, exercising in the morning can help um, bring us back into that natural rhythm. Um, not being on our phones, you know, with that blue light banging us in the eyes right up until we want to go to sleep and then expecting to just be able to fall asleep like that. Um, I've started talking more um, in my groups and stuff about establishing a bedtime routine for ourselves. Like I know that I was like really hardcore about bedtime routine with my kids. They're four and six now like yours. Um, So it's not, it's shifted since they were babies, but it's still really important and it's important to them too. Like they really value that time. Um, And it's occurred to me recently, like, but I don't, when did it, when did a bedtime routine stop being important, you know, for me as I got older? Um, and it is important because we need to signal to our body that it's time to go to sleep, right? We can't just expect us to just lay down, just like you need to warm up to have like hardcore exercise. You don't, you can't just, you know, get off the couch and sprint or you shouldn't anyway, right? Yeah. Um, and you can't be like working on your computer until midnight and then just lay down and expect to have a good night's sleep. But you know, you need to build I, love up to follow, I love to follow Craig Ballantyne and he's a, a strength, he's a personal trainer and a performance coach, a, a, like a life performance coach. And something that really struck me with him is that you have, you get up and you go to sleep at the same time every day, mm-hmm. like regardless of the day of the week, regardless of what's happening. You just have real structure to that. And that's something that's actually made a big difference for me. Like go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time every day and start to set your body up for success and, and, and do some habits. And of course, I've exchanged my evening glass of wine, which got me through a lot of those younger days with yeah. some frankincense and my essential oil diffuser. But it's just setting up that that habit, that pattern, that structure to help me wind down to go to sleep and get a restful sleep. Cause um, Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. So yeah, that has been so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, Is there no anything problem. else that you want to, that you want to share about any of this? Um, I think we addressed a lot. <laughs> yeah, I guess it can feel overwhelming. Like I know that we've talked about a lot of things and it feels like for some people, maybe it feels like they need to do a total life overhaul, but Um, What I'd like to say is the good news is that it's all so interconnected. Like our body is fabulous and it's so simple, but it's also so, so complicated. Um, But, but addressing some of these things doesn't really have to be complicated. And like, no matter which one you choose, it's going to have a cascade effect and, and it will benefit all of the areas. So just kind of, you know, picking one or two things to focus on and, and work on, um, can make a big difference. It really can until it feels more possible to do one more thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to do all the things. That's mm-hmm. that's what leads to adrenal fatigue in the first place. <laughs> Make some things right? Yeah. Better. Yeah. And just that's you know, cool. awesome. I'm willing to say no. <laughs> I guess it's awesome. Thank you. thank you. So if my runners are out there and they're listening and they're like, oh my God, she's talking to me. I need <laughs> I need more. I need help. How can they get in touch with you? Um, yeah, well, you can, they can email me. Um, I have a free group as well that I know some of your runners are in. It's called Strong and Vibrant Mothers, which I, I talk a lot about this sort of thing. I can. Oh, I've lost you again. I've lost her. If you need her, I have all of her information. Just get in touch with me. And, um, some of the stuff that I can. She is back. I kind of lost you a little bit. But um, I will make sure that if anybody needs Leanne's info, that I will get it to you because she's fabulous for one-on-one consulting about this. So I kind of lost you on my end. Yeah, sorry. It froze there just a little bit. Sorry about that. I'm just filling the gaps. I told them if they need you, they can come through me. So I've got you. Yeah, absolutely. Likely in the group too, so. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Sorry, my internet just froze there for a minute. I was like, oh, it's perfect timing. Awesome. 
Um, yeah. Luckily, because I'm not burned out anymore, I didn't like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like a weight's been lifted off of me recently too so um, yeah I feel all this stuff and I'm really excited to bring this to you guys because it's a learning process and you got to take this in and like change one little thing and eventually like your fog is going to clear but it does take work it does take mindfulness and um, Absolutely. that's what Leanne and I it's how we both coach that's our style so thank you and thank uh, you so much yeah we'll see you later okay take care Bye.